Hello, I'm your host today. My name is Richard Claywell. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me. I'm a certified public accountant and I hold multiple business valuation designations. I'm accredited in business valuation. I am an accredited senior appraiser, I'm a certified business appraiser. I have international certified valuation specialist designation. I am also the chairman of the board of the international certified valuation specialist organization. I am a certified valuation analyst. I have a master analyst in financial forensics, certified in fraud deterrence, accredited in business appraisal review, and a certified value growth advisor. What I want to talk again about today is being able to manipulate the value of a company and you not really knowing what is going on with this. I've seen these errors in people that have very high credentials in doing business valuation work and I've seen people that have very minimal experience in doing business valuation work and they both make the same mistake. One of the first things we want to do is to adjust the financial statements to generally accepted accounting principles and that's called GAAP, G-A-A-P. So we need to adjust to GAAP. That adjusting is called normalizing. So what we want to do is to normalize <clears throat> the financial statements. Part of that consists of adjusting the fixed assets to fair market value. We want to hopefully get an appraisal from a third party independent real property appraiser and a personal property appraiser. We will then adjust the financial statements to those numbers. We're not correcting or fixing anything, we're just adjusting to fair market value after we have already adjusted to general accepted accounting principles. The issue is we adjust the fixed assets to their fair market value. When you look at this from an accounting standpoint, we have an item that's called accumulated depreciation. And that's where we're trying to recoup the cost over the time that the asset is held so we can replace that. The problem is fair market value does not recognize the concept of accumulated depreciation. So when we do the valuation, in our training, we are taught to remove the accumulated depreciation because it does not exist in the concept of fair market value. So what winds up happening is business valuators will go out and they will adjust the total fixed assets to fair market value. And a lot of times they will adjust the accumulated depreciation by some number and they wind up leaving the accumulated depreciation on the balance sheet. That is incorrect. There's absolutely no treatise whatsoever that supports that particular theory, but it's, it, it is out there. And for you all watching on YouTube, I've got an exhibit that shows what to look for. And in the example that I have, you have the total fixed assets of 1877 and in this particular report, and this is an actual report, has $869,000 in accumulated depreciation, which gives us a total fixed assets of a million seven. That number is incorrect. Because we have the accumulated depreciation of 869,406, that is not a concept in fair market value. It's an accounting concept, but it is not a fair market value concept. This error will reduce the value of this particular company by 72%. So when you're doing your settlement, you're looking at what these values are, do you realize that the, 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 your argument for settling this is actually 72% lower than it really should be? So if you see this on a financial statement where you have the accumulated appreciation under the header of adjusted book value, that number is incorrect. That could be done by your expert or it could be done by the opposing expert. So you need to look for this. One of the questions to consider is if your expert has done this, it, it's wrong. There, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, and I, I, would, I would attack that and, and try to get a Dalbert challenge on that 
uh, to get them eliminated because this tells me that they really don't understand quite what the theory is and how to do uh, the valuations. This error will trickle down into the, the final values. If you have a, a weighting that you're going to do, i.e. you're going to give, say, 10% weighting to the adjusted net asset approach and uh, a different weighting to a market approach and a different weighting to a income approach, then you've co-mingled something that is, has no theory whatsoever in valuations into a total number. That will make those numbers incorrect. So then the question becomes, how many data points has relied upon that adjusted book value that is incorrect? So that will trickle down. One of the things that, that I'm going to create for you is if you go out to my website, I've got a cheat sheet. That, and I'm not an attorney, but the cheat sheet walks you through proving that this is really incorrect. So that might help uh, you in your litigation cases or just trying to understand what is going on with the adjusted book value methodology. Also on my website, I'm going to have a qualifications for experts. I know it's difficult to determine who is qualified, who is not qualified. I actually saw a website for a, an individual that had called me to help him do evaluation for, for 12 companies and I looked him up on the internet and it was a fantastic website. He'd been doing valuations for four years, uh, talked to him about this, you know, why are you contacting me? The issue was he had done one valuation a year for four years, so therefore he's got four years of experience. So the qualifications of an expert will help you determine whether or not your expert is really qualified or not. This will be a first in a series that we're going to be talking about for doing business valuations and try to find errors that are out there to make it easier for you to understand what is happening with this. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you for your time.